Hello everyone. Let us look at chapter number two, which is solutions and their colligative properties. Study of chemistry is incomplete without study of solutions. Solutions are defined as a homogeneous mixture of two or more components. Now the, these two, these components can be of two types, and those types are solute and solvent. Now solvent is that component which is present in large quantity, whereas solute is that component which is present in smaller quantity. Solution can be defined as solvent plus solute. Here the solvent is A and the solute is B. For example, the solvent can be water and the solute can be sugar. Sugar is less in quantity that is why it is called as solute. Solvent water is present in more quantity that is why it is called as solvent. Now weight of solution can be weight weight of solvent plus weight of solute. Let's see the types of solutions. The three states of matter solid, liquid or gases can play the role of either solvent or solute. Now depending on the composition of the solution we can have three types of solutions. They can be solid type of solutions, liquid types of solutions or gaseous type of solutions. Depending on the solvent the solutions are defined because the solvent is in more amount. Now solid type of solution can be solid in solid. One example of that is alloys. Brass, bronze, all these alloys are a mixture of two components, solid components. The second is liquid in solid. One very famous and familiar example is chewing gum, which is an example of liquid in solid. The third type is gas in solid. And the example of that is pumice stone. Now, now the next type of solution is liquid type of solution. Now fourth one solid in liquid. The example of that is sugar in water or salt in water. Next liquid in liquid. Ethanol in water is an example of liquid in liquid type of solution. Gas in liquid. The example oxygen in water or else very familiar coca these are carbonated beverages carbon dioxide the flavored liquid. Now the next type of solution is gas type of solution wherein we can have solid in gas. Now iodine in air is the example of this particular type of solution. Liquid in gas is the next type of solution whose example is chloroform in nitrogen and the last type is gas in gas which is air mixtures of non-reacting gases. So these are some types of solutions depending on the of the solutions. Let's now look at one very important point of the chapter solutions and colligative properties which is Raoult's law. Now before we move on to Raoult's law let us understand a very important concept which is vapor pressure. Now to understand vapor pressure let us consider a volatile liquid and the best example of volatile liquid is obviously water. Consider there is one container which is a closed one and there is water in it. At any particular temperature the water molecules would evaporate and these molecules are called as vapors. Now these vapors are going to collide onto the walls of the container and create some kind of pressure and this pressure is called as the vapor pressure. Now that we have understood what is vapor pressure, let us move on, move on to understanding what is Raoult's law. We have considered a situation wherein we have a container and there are three components in the container. There is solvent 1, solute 2 and solute 3. Solvent means the one which is more in quantity, solute are less in quantity. Now we have to keep in mind that all these three components are volatile in nature and as these three are volatile in nature they are going to exert some kind of vapor pressure on the in the container. <coughs> now 
each component will create some vapor pressure and that vapor pressure is called as the partial vapor pressure which is represented by P and P is directly proportional to the mole fraction of that particular component in the solution. If we want to remove the proportionality constant, what we can do is we can introduce a new constant into the equation and that constant is P1 naught or P naught which is the vapor pressure due to pure component. It is the pressure when only that component is present in the solution and no other component is present in the solution. So what we have done is we have removed the proportionality constant and replaced it with the equality constant and introduced a new constant which is P1 naught which is the partial pressure due to pure component. Similarly partial pressure of component 2 will be equal to pressure due to component 2 itself when only component 2 is present in the solution multiplied by the mole fraction of the second component. Similarly, partial pressure due to the third component would be equal to pressure of that component when only that component is present in the solution into the mole fraction of that component. And that is what is the Raoult's law which states that the partial vapor pressure of any volatile component of a solution is the product of vapor pressure of that pure component and the mole fraction of that component in the solution. So we have seen these three examples of Raoult's law. By using Dalton's law what we can do is we can calculate the whole vapor pressure of the solution itself. What is the whole vapor pressure of the solution? It is the addition of the partial pressures of each component. That is partial pressure of component 1 is P1, P1, partial pressure due to component P2 and par partial pressure due to component 3 that is P3. So this is the addition which gives us the total vapor pressure. That is what is Raoult's law.